Welcome back to En Vivo. I'm here with Raul Lauri Contreras, who co-hosted En Vivo for about 20 years. He's also a political commentator. In addition to that, he's a writer. He's here to promote his new book titled Murder in the Mountains. Thank you so much for joining us, Raul. Well, thank you, and it's good to be home to En Vivo. <laughs> I mean, this was like my second home for, well, over two decades. So uh, it's I, it's good to be back and to see the familiar faces, all the people I worked with. A lot with. of new faces, I, I Well, assume. there's some new faces, <laughs> too. But uh, the every, I s of the four people in front of me here, three <laughs> of them were here when I was here. Okay, so it's yeah. not too different. Yeah. So let's talk here a little bit about Murder in the Mountains. What is it about? Murder in the Mountains is about a battle that took place in 1992 uh, in the Caucasus Mountains between uh, Armenian forces that were conquering Azerbaijani mm -hmm. territory. Azerbaijan is a country right east of Armenia. Armenia is uh, on the eastern right. end of Europe. And then Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is between Iran on the south and Russia on the north. And Armenia and Georgia on the west and the Caspian Sea, uh, where the caviar comes from, and oil, uh, on the east. And they fought over territory in, in 1992. And this one particular town of about 6,000 people was attacked by Armenian forces February 26, 1992, and they either killed or captured uh, about a thousand people, uh, about six, seven hundred. Nobody knows for sure because some of right. the people are still missing. Well, uh, men, women, and children were slaughtered in an ambush as they were trying to escape mm -hmm. through a corridor, a safety corridor. The Armenians had said, "This is your safe corridor to go." out of the mountains right. and they were waiting the uh, Armenians and Russians and when they got to a certain point a place called Black Rock they uh, the uh, soldiers stood up and with machine guns and AK-47s they killed a documented 600 plus wow. and, and there's still 400 people missing uh, it was the first evidence of ethnic cleansing. Right. It was after that that it happened between uh, Serbia and uh, Kosovo. Right. That happened a couple years later. That got all the publicity. This one didn't. I didn't know anything right. about it. How did you find out about this? Well, uh, I'm an old uh, I'm a re uh, I'm an old United States Marine. Okay. I'm also a former. Thank you for serving our country. Uh huh. <laughs> and I'm also a, uh, a former New York Times writer. And I read the New York Times every day, even to this day. And I saw something, uh, an article that referred to the frozen conflict. I thought they meant the Battle of Chosin Reservoir mm -hmm. in the Korean War, which is famous in Marine Corps history. So I immediately looked it up, and all of a sudden I'm reading about men, women, and children getting slaughtered. Um, when we were sitting around here in 1992 wondering about Ross Perot and, and uh, President Bush and right. some guy named Clinton from Arkansas, <laughs> you know, and, and that had all of our attention at the time. So I started looking, I read the articles and I looked up more articles and one thing led to another and uh, I wound up interviewing uh, two survivors, two women. Uh, these women were captured, they were tortured, they were raped, they were held hostage, and they mm. were finally traded for bags of wheat. That's horrible. Uh, it's horrible. It's uh, just absolutely horrible. And uh, I listened to their stories, and they were just totally amazing. It really, you know, I'm a tough old guy. I'm a tough old Marine. And when I interviewed Durdana, right. uh, I almost cried. I mean, I couldn't imagine that what this woman went through. And then, of course, being the father of a daughter and ha having a mother uh, who is, is now gone. But the mm -hmm. fact is that I, I sort of put them in her in Dordana's place. And I said, you know, I don't know if they could have survived that. This woman did. It sort of Mary banned the other, the other woman. Right. And, um, and she had had a baby just two nights before she was taken prisoner. Um, oh my God. It was an amazing story. I really got into it. I went over there to Azerbaijan, to a place called Baku, mm -hmm. which reminded me a lot of Los Angeles. Right. <laughs> really, <laughs> Is that a good really, thing? Really, oh yeah, they're, <laughs> and they're very secular. They're Shia Muslims, but they're, they're very secular. In one day, I visited a Russian Orthodox church, a Roman Catholic church, and two Jewish synagogues in the middle of a country that's 95% Shia Muslim. Right. But they're very, very secular. 
The country of Azerbaijan has been an ally of ours in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. they, they joined us in Afghanistan in 2002 when we first got there and uh, have been there ever since and uh, they're a good ally of ours. Uh, they, in 1900, were the leading oil producer in the world outside the United States of America. Right. Uh, Mexico became number two in 1915 and Baku is number three. And, and is still a major oil producer. They also do natural gas, and they're sending all their natural gas and right. oil to Israel and Eastern Europe. And so the Russians are all upset because that's cutting into their right. monopoly. I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what the book's about. That's what the book's about. And where can people find your book? Purchase like book. everything else on Amazon. Perfect. Or I will be doing a book signing at Warwick's in La Jolla. Um, that's August 4th here at Warwick's in La Jolla, and I'll be there with my colleague Ruben Navarrete from the Washington Post, and yeah. he's going to do an interview, so awesome. that's that what we're doing. Great. Thank you so much, Raul. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for being here. You. We'll be right back.